Hi, my name is Random Tuesday, and welcome to my Aloy Silent Hunter Medium cosplay from Horizon Zero Dawn. In this video, I talk about the arms and the legs and the heads and the toes, but not the shoulders. Those you can find over in part one, including information on the rest of the body portion. So check out that video if you're looking for that information. Definitely head over to my website, randomtuesday.com, where I have direct links, including links to a pattern for this cosplay, a pattern for the base Aloy Noir cosplay, direct links to various pieces that I acquired and purchased for this costume, as well as information and resources from a bunch of other cosplays. So with that, let's hunt some robots. The legs are comprised in three separate pieces. First, for each leg, I made a separate armor kneecap piece. The kneecap metal portions were all made in the same way, out of warbla over EVA foam, and then painted and weathered. Uh, one of them has a little bit of rope attached to it. They then use elastic in the back that I hide under the same pleather that I use for the leg sections, and in fact, the rest of it. Uh, and they sit right around my knee so that they don't slide down my calf because my calves are thicker than my knees. So that keeps them in place and also allows me some pretty good range of motion because they're, they're not directly connected to the legs, so they'll shift around a little bit too. Uh, for this one, I use just little D-rings in the back with warbla loops to attach the elastic. And for this one, I actually just run the elastic directly underneath this rope to keep it in place. The next section is the legs. They are essentially a tube. The actual shape of these is a square fabric that I wrapped around my leg and then stitched together in a tube shape. I added a seam, a little dart seam, right at the top of my calf to curve around it a little bit more. And I used a couple of snaps so that I could get it on and off more easily around the most narrow sections. Like the skirt and the shirt, you can get a pattern for the layout of this netting over on my website. The shoes started out as a base of a flip-flop that I cut to size, and then essentially a small sort of moccasin-style boot. The boots are basically just a trace around my foot, and then a, a looser section around the top, and then I keep them snug around my ankle with just a strip of elastic. Ideally, you'd find elastic that matches the color of this more accurately than white does, but thankfully the elastic's high enough up that I can tuck it underneath the leg section and keep it disguised that way. The arms, much like the legs, are made out of pleather. These are not just a rectangle, they're more of a rhomboid shape, a more traditional bracer style wraps around my arm, and then is hand stitched in place here. I wanted to keep a lot of my edges raw and uneven to kind of reflect that natural style in her costumes and general lack of modern machinery uh, in order to create clothing. For the right arm, there's also a strip of a uh, strip piece of bolo leather just glued and stitched around the top section, as well as a slight closure here to hide a portion of it. And on the left arm, there's another section of armor made out of EVA foam and warbla. This was climbing cord, decorative climbing cord, I assume, with some decorative sections on it. For Aloy, if you can, and they are a little bit more expensive and a little bit trickier to work with, you really do want to get a lace front wig. They will give you a much more natural looking hairline. And because Aloy's whole thing is having all of this stupid amount of hair just pulled back from her face, it's going to give you the most realistic look and the most game accurate look. You can get away with ones where they have a skin top in the front and it's not a lace front. It just won't look quite as natural, but it will tend to be a little bit easier to work with. I started with the base of it. It was this nice red color, but then she has these sort of bright ends to her hair. So in order to do that, I took wefts and then I essentially ombre dyed them in a dye bath of nylon writ dye, uh, using a little bit of red and some green because I had green and not brown on hand to make it a little bit more of a brownish color. So you can see in here some parts that are a little bit brighter red. Those are the tops, these right here, the tops of the wefts. And then I left the ends of them because they were blonde wefts, that sort of blondish color. And to put the wefts in, you just separate the hair out along the hairline in the wig, and then you just stitch it directly to the same, the same way they put the rest of the hair on the wig, in fact. Uh, after I put all of the wefts in, it was time to style it. I am not a great hairstylist. There are a bunch of really helpful tutorials online that people have already made about how they styled Aloy's wig. Let's look at how to put on the wig. First thing we're gonna do is get our hair in the wig cap. <laughs> and if you're like me, you have little short bits of hair on the side, we wanna get those out of the way because we're gonna be covering uh, the 
the side of our ears, the sideburns with part of the wig. So we're gonna we're gonna glue stick it down. So you can kind of glue stick all of the little bits. This stuff is washable. Kids eat it. It's fine. Once your hair is out of the way, it is time to get the wig on your head. So like most wigs, you're gonna start by lining it up, pulling it down. This one has some little combs in it. So I'm gonna shift it around and then get those nice and in place. Make sure that the little sideburns are where they're supposed to be. And the hairline is as far forward as it can be so you cover both your hair and the wig cap. If you want, you can glue the top part down, but you'll definitely want to glue these down. So once you've got the whole thing in place, we're gonna lift up these sides and we're gonna use Prosade, which is a prosthetic adhesive. It's a uh, very sticky. Get a sponge or something you do not care about because you don't want to reuse it except for this. And we're gonna double apply it. So we're gonna put it on the sideburns and then also on our face. And don't stick it down right away because you wanna let it dry and get nice and tacky. And you can tell it's dry, cause it'll be sticky, tacky, and you won't see any of the whites. It's not quite dry yet. So we wait more. Right. When it's mostly dry, if you're impatient like me, <laughs> that's when you wanna stick it down. So you're gonna pull it in place and hold it there for a second. The last part is any of these sticky bits that don't get covered by the wig, you're gonna powder down just so that your face isn't literally sticking to itself. For the focus, which I made mine out of Warbla and EVA foam and lots of paint, uh, and then I just taped a magnet onto the back of it. We're gonna take one of the magnets, just uh, sneakily tuck it under the wig. It's a little, little tricksy. Just gonna kind of get it in there. Like, so it's right up in here. It's strong, a strong magnet. And then we just go, boop. And her focus is there. The last little bit of her makeup look is, we'll add some freckles. We start with some and a brown and a stipple brush. Just kind of put down a layer. We're gonna add some, some thicker ones. It's just, I just used the end of my paintbrush into the cream makeup. The same technique. You can see me do this in more detail on my Evie Fry makeup look old throwback. Finally, uh, to make my eyebrows not stand out like they don't belong on my face, we're gonna just fill them in. You can use some eyeshadow. I'm just using a kind of reddish brown. And that's Aloy's look. For the spear, I relied heavily on two main resources, Kamui Cosplay's EVA foam version of Aloy Spear, including using her template pattern for the spear itself. It's incredibly helpful. Go follow that YouTube video. It'll be a link somewhere. It's really useful. Uh, I also took a little, a little bit of information from Lightning Cosplay as well, uh, especially when it came to the paint and the layout, but she did a 3D print version of it. And I did mine out of uh, EVA foam and Warbla because I really like the durability that you can get using Warbla. And also I'm really bad at working with EVA foam and Warbla covers up many of my horrible mistakes and errors. Thank you so much for watching my Aloy Silent Hunter Medium Part 2 video. If you're looking for Part 1, you can check that out on the link somewhere on this page. I'm still bad at lefts and rights. You can also head over to my website, randomtuesday.com, for a link to the pattern for this cosplay, the base Aloy pattern cosplay, as well as other tutorials and resources. You can also check me out live on twitch.tv slash random Tuesday, where I am often working on cosplays and I'm always happy to answer questions, as well as subscribe to this YouTube channel to get alerts and notifications for when I have new videos out. You never know when one's going to be coming. And lastly, but never leastly, thank you to each and every one of my patrons over on Patreon who made this video and this cosplay a reality. If you're able to, any support over there is incredibly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching.